And Nancy Cordes is with us on the tarmac in White Plains, New York, a tarmac she knows well. So Nancy, I want to start again with uh, the email case. As we just heard in your piece, uh, the FBI has now found messages related to her time as Secretary of State on Anthony Weiner's laptop. They are said not to be duplicates. So how is the campaign at this point looking to handle it all? Well, they really don't know how to respond because what we still don't know is whether anything in those emails is actually significant or changes the FBI's determination about Clinton's use of a private server in some way. So uh, they believe that at this point, the candidate has been out there on the campaign trail. She said what she wants to say about it. And now they're looking to turn the page. They don't want to draw any more attention uh, to her email problems. And that may be one factor, Josh, behind the fact that we really haven't had a chance to interact with Hillary Clinton in a couple of weeks now. You remember that flurry back in September when she was doing uh, a number of press conferences, coming to the back of the plane to talk to us? Uh, that has pretty much dried up. And the sense is that part of the reason is that she knows that we would be asking about this FBI um, investigation, if you want to call it that. Uh, we would be asking about the State Department's release of more Clinton-related emails, uh, and that is just not what they want the focus to be on in these closing days of the race. And I, I point to a CBS poll number here that is staggering, even though we've spent months and months discussing the idea of it. 82 percent of likely voters are disgusted by this race. 13 percent are excited, meanwhile. Clinton's strategy has seemed very much like that of her GOP uh, counterpart uh, this week, paint a scary picture of what a presidency of their rival would be like. What is the campaign mm -hmm. sense of how that's being received? Well, it was really interesting. For the first time last night in Raleigh, uh, Hillary Clinton essentially came out and said, look, I get it. Uh, you are disgusted. I hear from people all the time who say their stomach is bothering them, uh, who say that they can't sleep. And everyone in the uh, press corps said, how did you know that? Uh, how did you know we were feeling that way? But no, really, you know, I, I think even the candidate is aware at this point that uh, a vast number of Americans uh, feel a sense of unease. Uh, and perhaps it's because this race has gone on for what seems like seven or eight years at this point, And people are ready for it to be over. But also this sense of unease about will the country be able to come together after this? Uh, will the president that we select be trustworthy? Can we believe what they say? Uh, will Congress be investigating the president, no matter who it is, for years on end? And I think that um, what Clinton is trying to do is to argue, look, I know um, that I'm not that popular now, but when I actually am in office, when I've been Secretary of State, when I've been in the Senate, uh, I actually uh, had a record of working with the other side, and that's what I want to do when I'm president. She's also making the case, Josh, that she's got this presidential trait uh, that typically we haven't placed a huge premium on in politics, which is listening. Uh, you know, she started this campaign with a big listening tour, and she says, you know, one huge key to finding common ground is being willing to listen to the other side, and I've got a reputation for doing that. Getting folks to listen helps when the surrogates uh, in tow are A, listers. She'll have have two more of them in Cleveland. Jay-Z and Beyonce supporting uh, the candidate yeah. with a free concert tonight. Yesterday, it was Pharrell on the stump for her in North Carolina. What is the sense of their impact here in these final days? You know, politicians are not all that popular right now, but but superstars are. <laughs> and so uh, it's not just Beyonce and Jay-Z, although they are, you know, certainly the, the headliners. Katy Perry doing a concert in Philadelphia tomorrow. Cher is doing a concert. Stevie Wonder is doing a concert. Uh, Hillary Clinton won't be able to make it to all of them. But, uh, you know, the campaign really believes that at this point, uh, it's less about changing minds and it's more about getting your supporters and your true believers to actually go to the polls and vote. So any way that they can reach those people, whether it's having Pharrell speak to young voters in North Carolina or having Katy Perry sing to college voters in Philadelphia, anything that they can do to remind people to do their civic duty and vote uh, is going to be of benefit to them. And I was talking to one voter, Josh, in 
um, Durham yesterday. She's a Democrat and says she gets a knock on her door twice a day at this point. She said, I already voted several days ago. And so I asked her, well, you know, I, I wonder why they don't have some way of tracking that you've already voted so they'll stop bothering you. And she said, yes, they actually apologized and said there's a three day lag between when you vote and when they actually check you off of their list to come pester you. So uh, it just shows the degree to yeah. which this Democratic Clinton turnout machine uh, could have an impact on Election Day if they are able to get their voters to the polls, basically drive them crazy enough to actually go and pull the lever. Um, you know, th then even if even if Donald Trump is catching up in the polls, uh, it may not be enough in the face of this turnout machine. It also shows what it is to live in Ohio and Pennsylvania and North Carolina and Florida once every four years. Nancy Cordes there on the tarmac. As ever, we do appreciate it. Good to talk to you, Josh.